Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about painting gold and two different methods I use for painting gold armour to achieve some different looks. I'm going to be using some Custodes models for this, but this can easily be used for gold on any miniatures. The first scheme is a more traditional Custodes armour, a nice, bright, rich gold that replicates the look of the box art. The first step is to use Retributor armour to give the miniature a good solid coat of gold. I did this using an airbrush, but you could easily do this with a rattle can. I then use some Reichland Flesh Shade to completely cover the model, making sure to get it into all of the recesses and the details. While doing this though, I also made sure not to allow the wash to pool anywhere and took care to get a good even coat all over the model. I then left this to dry for about an hour before moving on to the next step. Next I then added some Agrax Earthshade, but only to the very deepest recesses. This step isn't completely necessary, but it does help to add some more contrast and depth to the model. This is how it looked after I'd gone around the whole model doing this and left everything to dry. I then wanted to brighten the gold back up again, as the washer doled it down a little bit too much. I made a 50-50 mix of Retributor Armour and Auric Armour Gold, and then began to layer up the gold armour with this mix, taking care not to get it into any of the recesses, and concentrating it on all of the raised areas. This really helped to brighten the model back up, and bring some shine to the gold again. I then added some Liberator Gold to the previous mix, and did the same process again over the whole model. This time I concentrated even more towards the raised areas, taking care not to cover up the previous layer. That's the base coats of the gold done now. It's nice and shiny again and ready for some highlights. I then edge highlighted the whole model with Liberator Gold, making sure to get all of the details. This process is one of the longest steps to do. It takes quite a bit of time due to all the detail, but it's worth just taking the time to be as neat as possible. This is a really important step for the final look. This is going to allow all of those details to stand out when it's finished. I then repeated this process with Stormhost Silver, but this time concentrating the silver more towards the corners of the plates and the extreme edges, making sure not to completely cover up the Liberator Gold and allowing them to look like they've blended together. Here's how it looks at this stage. There's a really nice shine to the gold and all of the details stand out really well. For the next step I used Black Legion Contrast Paint to block in all of the black areas and all of the areas that I would later paint metallic. I went over all of these areas with two coats to make sure that none of the gold was showing through. There's not too many parts that needed this, it's mainly just the ribbing between the armour plates and the weapon. I then used Lead Belcher to fill in all of the parts of the model I wanted to be a more of a silver metallic colour. It's mainly these pipes around the torso and the vents on the back of the armour. I also made sure to pick out all of the metallic details on the weapon as well. I then covered all of the lead belcher with a wash of Nuln Oil to shade it and give it some more depth. As with the previous step with the Reichland Flesh Shade wash, I made sure to not allow any of the wash to pool, but still get into all of the recesses. When this was completely dry, I then layered up all of these areas using Iron Breaker to brighten them back up again, making sure not to allow any of this to get into any of the recesses. I then followed this up with the final highlight of Stormhost Silver. I went around all of the silver areas and used this to pick out all of the edges. This really helped to make it pop a little bit more, and this is how it looked when all of the metallics were completed. I then added some Thondia Brown to all of the leather parts on the arms, taking care not to cover up any of the gold. When this was dry, I then layered up all of these parts using Doom Ball Brown, making sure to leave the previous Thondia Brown still visible in all of the recesses. I then finished up these areas with a thin highlight of Scrag Brown just to bring all of the details out. Next I used some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint to block in all of the red areas. You could skip this step, but I like to use contrast paint in this way. It's a quick and easy way to get a nice base colour on before layering it up. I find it saves time, but it isn't completely necessary. When this had dried, I covered all of the red with a wash of Agrax Earthshade to give it some more definition and allow all of the detail to stand out. Next I used some Mephiston Red to give another base coat to all of the red parts, making sure to avoid all of the recesses and allow some of the darker red underneath to show through. I then did the same thing using Evil Sun Scarlet, a slightly brighter red, to add another layer focusing towards the centre of the leather strips and the shoulder pad. The red was then finished up with a thin edge highlight of Wild Rider Red, and a thin line of this painted down the top edge of the curve of the shoulder pad. I then added a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange into that previous red, and used this just to add a little dot highlight just to finish it off and really brighten that red up. This is how it looked at this stage. It's nearly finished, but it still needs a few more steps. The black still needed a highlight, 
To do this, I used Dark Reaper, which is a nice dark blue gray to do a thick edge highlight on all of the black ribbing between the armor and also along the edges of the spear handle. To finish the black, I added a final highlight of Fenrisian gray to the most raised areas of the ribbing between the armor and then concentrating on the corners and the rivets of the spear. The last step for the armor was to do the gems. I used Soulstone Blue for the gems, which had already been based in silver. This acts a little bit like a contrast paint. It's quite transparent and the bright silver makes it look nice and shiny. You could paint this in using more traditional paints, but I really like the way that this one looks and it's really nice and quick and easy to do. I painted the cloak for the miniature off camera, but I used the exact same methods and the same paints that I used for the rest of the red. And then I also used a little bit of sterling mud to add some texture to the base. And here he is all finished. I painted the face and the spear blade off camera as I wanted to concentrate more on the armor but I may do some more videos covering these at another time. This is a relatively easy method to get a very nice bright striking gold, but you could easily miss a few of the layering steps in order to save time and maybe add those steps in just for characters. Now I'll quickly go over the method I use for my own custodies. It uses most of the same paints, but will give a very different look. I started in the same way with a base coat of Retributor armor. I then covered the whole model in Drakenoff Nightshade. This is a very dark blue wash. I took the time to make sure that all of the recesses were filled with the wash, but not allowing the wash to pool anywhere. Although the look the scheme gives is quite forgiving if there is some patchy staining on the armor. This is how it looked when it was dry. It gives a similar look to old weathered brass. This works really well for statues for scenery too, if you leave it at this stage. Next, I did an edge highlight of Liberator Gold. I went around the whole model, catching all of the edges and details of the armor. I then did the same again with Stormhost Silver, but this time keeping only to the very most raised areas. I was also a little bit more sparing with the silver than in the previous method for gold, as I didn't want it to be too bright. I still wanted to keep the darker weathered look to the armor. So that's all the gold done. It's definitely faster than the previous method. Next I added some Flesh Terrace Red Contrast Paint. I did two coats of this to make sure that none of the gold showed through. I used this darker red as I think it fits better with this gold, but you could use a brighter red from the other method. I then covered the red with Nuln Oil. As you can see, I also added black and lead belcher to the metal parts. I did this in exactly the same way as before, so you can just go back and follow that same method. The red was then highlighted with Wazdaka Red, and then a final highlight with Squig Orange. And here is the finished look. These are a few from my own Custodes collection that I painted a while back. The only things I've not covered are the blades and the bases, but if there's enough interest, I'll be happy to make some videos to show how those are done. So there you have two very different methods for painting gold that are quite easy to achieve. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon.